Hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I will be doing an action wobble card. A monster under the bed. But it's going to be a happy monster. Because look at this little guy. He's from Art Impressions. And I think he's just the sweetest little monster ever because he's got such a big grin on his face. I'm not really into scary Halloween cards. That's just not my, my jam. I like happy Halloween cards if I'm going to do any at all. And this little guy has a pumpkin sitting next to him in the stamp itself. But when I stamped it, I just masked out the pumpkin. I used my Misty to stamp it so that I could place the little sticky note in the right place to not stamp the pumpkin. And that leaves me free to send this any time of year. And when I was a kid, my dad always said, trick or treat, smell my feet, which is the sentiment on this. He would say that just when he took his shoes off in the middle of the summer, just because my dad was that way. And so for me, it's a year round kind of a sentiment. And this little guy would be perfect for kids anytime, even if it was, you know, balloons with a birthday card, a lot of different stamps you could combine something like this with. But I'm doing the Copic coloring. I'm rushing through this. I've got it sped up to twice the normal speed and I'm kind of cutting out the little bits where I go and change markers out because the focus on this is not the Copic coloring. It's on the actual construction of the card that will be coming up later. But I wanted to show you at least the Copic coloring even quickly so that we could talk through a few things. One of which is this is a natural blending group. I've talked about them before and if you go to any of my beginner Copic tutorials, a number of them talk about it. It's V12, V17, and V15 are the, the trio that I'm using. And whenever it has the letter and then the first digit in common and then the only difference is the last digit, those are going to blend easier than if you change those up. So you want to, if you're really struggling with your blending, just stay with ones that have the same letter and the same first number. Because that first number indicates the saturation and you want to make sure you keep the saturation the same. Saturation is how intense the color is. So you don't want a really bright color trying to mix with a really dull color. So I'm adding yellow and green to this one just in case I decide to send it during the Halloween season. It's going to go in my stash and I'll find somebody who needs a big old crazy smile to send this one to but I'm going to add my shading to the green. I'm just going to do two colors on the green and I, I don't really need to do a whole lot more than that because that's not the focal point of the coloring. And besides which, even the coloring on this is really loose. I wanted to keep it deliberately loose because the stamp set itself is drawn really loose. So I didn't want to fuss too much over a lot of the shading and stuff. But I'm adding a YR04 to the Y17 for the shading and go over that a little bit with an E08 because that was just not enough contrast. Because as I was looking at this, I was realizing that I just don't have much contrast at all because I, when I went over the violet with the, the V12, which was my lightest color, it kind of lightened everything. So I decided I was gonna go in and add more contrast. So I figured I'd add it to the toes anyway and then go back and add more to the purple parts. So I went with a V09. If the V1 family had a V19, I'd be really happy because that one would, would go better. This one is a little bit duller than the purples that I'm using, but that's okay. Well, looks like somebody must be on, on the whole uh, periscope there. Got my little whistling to tell me that somebody's gone live. If you have not gotten into the periscope thing, I highly recommend it. It is addictive as all get out and I'm having a blast going and seeing things. I actually watched a Department of Defense video the other day. It was really interesting and yeah. Anyway, all right, back to yammering about the coloring. I'm adding my darkest shades in the darkest places and then I go in with one shade lighter then. So I'm going back in with my V1s again to try to darken that and, and blend the V09, which was so dark into the other colors and then just going back through my my uh, complement of the V colors that I'd already used and I'm careful around the eyes because I didn't want to add frowns to his eyebrows if you do too much of that above the eyes you can actually end up making them look kind of mean so now I'm going to color a second set of feet this stamp set has an extra set of feet 
and I'll zoom through it because you've already seen the feet being colored. But if you have a stamp you want to use an action wobble with like this, just stamp a portion of the image and you can fussy cut out those feet. This one comes with a die in the set, but you could do it with a set that you don't have the die for and that doesn't have the separate stamp by just trimming out that second part so that you can add that when you layer the action wobble on top, which you will see in a minute and that will all make much more sense. So this one comes with the action wobble and I've gone and die cut it out, but I want to get busy on my card construction. So I've got the image now adhered inside of my card base. And I'm marking here where I want to put this lawn fawn die. It's a cloud die, but I'm going to use it for the bottom of the bedspread. So I've marked with a pencil where I want those, the, that thing to rest, which actually wasn't in the right place but uh, you'll see how that works out in a minute. But this is an action wobble, and you can tell which way is the right way to do it by which way flicks the way you want it. The, the second way, that side does a little better of the bouncing around. So I want that side facing my little feet. You could do it the other way, and it'll still bounce around. It just won't bounce around as much. So I just kind of hold it and twing it until I see which side is gonna bounce the way that I want it to. So I'm going to add that right on top of his feet and now I can see how it's going to work and it bounces nicely which is great. But then I had to work a little bit too hard to get this under there so I actually ended up die cutting it a little bit shorter so that it doesn't have to tuck quite so far underneath of the feet. But it still does work even with a piece underneath of it. And then I went to find some paper. I wanted to put some pattern paper on it for the bedspread because that's the bed hanging down um, over top of our little monster and I used the same die to die cut that and while I was doing it I shortened the front of the card and then lined these two up and trimmed off the three excess sides. This is bow bunny paper from like ages ago. I hoard this stuff because I love the polka dots and I, it comes in all different colors so I unfortunately can't link you to it but I'll see if I can find any more dotted papers that I could link you to if you want to do something like this. You can make pencil lines though on whatever pattern paper you want to use for the bedspread. And then I'm actually going to color on it with Copics following along with the little pencil lines I made. And I'm just making like little quick flick marks along one side going from where the, the two meet and then making an L going out the other side. And are you seeing how it looks like it's quilted already? How quickly that happens with just a little light bit of color. And then I added little orange circles to each of the centers where those places meet. And uh, I thought that came out pretty cool. And then I added just a little tiny shadow underneath each one of those dots to make them look like little buttons. You could also put little pearl pen on there or little glossy accents or something. And then I decided to add a little darker trim to my, my little bedspread. And then I had to figure out how to make the inside of the card because it wasn't looking like it was underneath a bed quite yet. So I laid my card front down so I could figure out where I wanted to start coloring on the inside. Because this whole bottom section will be colored as if it's the underside of the bed. So I'm going to use some really dark colors right at the top because that's really far underneath of the bed and then move down to some greens so it'll look like you know maybe green carpet underneath of his feet and stretch that color down. And I'm just throwing color on there. I'm not gonna be real concerned about making it look beautiful. Like I said, this is a loosely colored image. So I wanted the, the background to just be a loose suggestion of being underneath of the bed. So then I added, I, I was getting too much in the dim colors, so I added a G99, which is a little bit brighter. And, you know, was kind of making the carpet that way. I was thinking that would be the shadows. Those dim colors would be the shadows underneath of the bed. And then I decided to just carry some of that green color above because then that would lighten those other colors, brighten them a little bit so it looks like the carpet is just continuing underneath of the bed. And then here's how the card comes together. That's the front of it. So when they open it, they can play with the little feet, but then they can also lift that up and they've got the little monster in there and his feet bounce both when it's on the outside of the card and, and the card front is closed down. And then it bounces nicely as well, of course, on the inside of the card. 
and I'm just so thrilled with how this one came out. I think it's adorable and there's so many things you could use Action Wobbles for. So many different stamps that would do this, but there's a couple of them by Art Impressions. I'll link you to a few of my favorites in the uh, blog post associated with this post with this video so that you can check them out if you want to see other ones that are perfect for this technique. Alrighty, so if you click on the sandyallnock.com in the upper right, that will take you to my blog post. There's also links in the description to get there so that you can see all of the other information that I always include on my blog posts when I do videos. Alright, thanks you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.